Hi, welcome back to the shop. Thanks for stopping by. I uh, put out a video a few weeks ago of a project that sells, and I got such a great response from people on that, and uh, lots of questions about, can I do more things like that for beginning turners that they could make and, uh, and sell at craft shows and whatnot to help them get themselves geared up with tools and, and uh, you know, to better their shop and things. And so what I'm going to do, if I can, is put a video out about once a month uh, with a simple project that for beginners that you don't need a ton of equipment for, and um, and things that I know that I've sold at craft shows for me in the past. And so this week we're going to make uh, both ornamental and a uh, full-size functioning birdhouse on the lathe. We're starting off with the drill press. This is just two pieces of scrap pine glued together. It's about three and a half inches square by five inches high, roughly. Uh, and all that I'm doing is drilling a little hole in the side, which would be the entrance hole for the bird. And right now I'm hollowing the ingrain out, uh, which would be the cavity where the bird would live. And this is obviously the ornamental birdhouse. Uh, you can do this with a drill and a Forstner bed if you don't have a drill press. It is much easier to do in a drill press. But the most important part is that you drill the side hole first and then do the end grain second. Now you can make these any size that you want out of any kind of wood that you want. You can make them out of laminated hardwood, make them very decorative. And you can just expand on this idea and, and go, go as crazy as you want to with them. This is just a nice basic one from some scrap wood that somebody would paint at the end of the day. Okay, so you can see I've knocked the corners off on the table saw. It just saves a little bit of turning, a little bit of little time on the lathe and some shavings. Um, but again, if you don't have a table saw, you can just turn them off on here. So what I've done is I've made this, this sacrificial block. It's a jam chuck, effectively, and it's going to drive this, my piece. So I've turned a dowel with a very slight taper on it to the same diameter as this. So it's an inch and a quarter, and um, this just slides over it. Now you'll see that there's a ledge right here. I've left the ledge there on purpose, that size, not bigger. One, it gives me an opportunity to get in here with my chisel to do some work. And the other one is, I know now when I come to this thickness, how thick my walls are. So, so I've got just a slightly more than an eighth of an inch there. So this just fits over this edge. You bring your tailstock up, lock your tailstock down, tighten it up. And it has to be reasonably tight because again, your friction is driving this. So if you're not tight enough, you will, uh, this will spin on, this, this will continue spinning, this will stop. Now. As this gets worn in and your tailstock goes into the wood, uh, as, it, as it penetrates that wood a little bit, you may have to tighten this a couple times and you'll notice I didn't have the spur center in. I take the spur center out of my tailstock. So the first step is to make the whole thing round. And don't go any smaller than round. So like the first project that sells video, which I'll leave a link to in the description, I'm gonna do all this in real time. And there's a lot more stops and starts, obviously, to explain things for demonstration purposes than I would do if I was making these uh, in a production run. But everything will be done in real time so that you know how long it takes roughly to do it. That's as far as I want to go. It's not quite round yet, but it's close. That's as far as I'm going to want to go with this chisel <clears throat> because it is a rough and gouge and it's not a bad cut, but I don't want to have to sand like that. So um, if you're really good with a skew, uh, you can do this all with a skew. That's the cleanest cut you're going to get. I'm not good with the skew, uh, but I am doing this for the benefit of people who don't turn much. Uh, and certainly you're probably not right out of the bat going to be good with the skew. So just regular bowl and spindle chisels. Uh, I'm a bowl turner, so I use mostly bowl, bowl tools on this. Okay, the next step, we drill the two inch hole. We're gonna mark a two inch line so that we know where that is. Just gonna put that in all the way around. But I need to know where I'm starting from. <clears throat> so we're gonna cut this down, not smaller than this, and we're gonna put some type of a profile on here. The hardest cut to make in this whole thing is the ledge cut that goes from where your little roof starts on top of your birdhouse to the wall. That's the one where you're going cross grain. Now this is pine, it's probably, it's soft. So it's probably one of the hardest ones you're gonna use to get a clean cut. Now you can make this out of anything you want. If you wanna get fancy and have some shop scrap and you wanna put, you know, laminated walnut and maple and cherry and purple heart, whatever you got, you can make these even more fancy by laminating them together instead of just putting two pieces of pine together. But for this demonstration, I just did it this way.
Okay, so always cut high to low so that you're going down the grain, which as you can see gives you a nice smooth cut. When you get close to the end, slow down. Make sure that your chisel has a good, you've got your handle of your chisel down low, so you get a nice sharp angle coming in there. Keep your bevel touching all the way down and, and really slow down at the very last end of this cut. Otherwise, you'll get a, a blowout and it'll just chip out on you. So that, that'll save you a lot of grief. Okay, so now obviously I'm not gonna make this top this big, but this is where the roof is gonna start. I'm gonna start making my roof above here. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually make this a little smaller now so that I have some more room to get in here. So to finish off that cut, you saw the first time I didn't <clears throat> go nearly as careful and how it all just kind of went to shreds. And then on the second cut, I just slowed down and went nice and easy and how much cleaner that is. So this is gonna be turned to a point and this isn't gonna matter anyhow, but just to show you the difference in those cuts. All right, now I'm gonna try and cut this in and I'm gonna start shaping this up to the, the shape that I want the little, the house part of it to be. Now, if you're not comfortable with the skew, you can take the bulk of this wood off with a diamond tool. So it works like a scraper, but you only cut with one edge or the other, okay? So you don't, you don't wedge this in so you're cutting with both, because if you do, you will get a catch and things are gonna go badly for you. All right, now you've gotten to the point where you're gonna to have to cut this ledge the rest of the way clean. So I got a nice clean cut started with, with, the, ski, with the bowl gouge when I made that first ledge. Where people get into trouble, especially guys like me who aren't very good with the skew, trying to cut this edge is when they're making their entrance cut on something like this, they get caught up and their chisel goes, catches and goes this way. Once you've got this ledge already established though, you can put the bevel of your skew on here and you can run this cut in nice and easily with a clean cut to start in. There's no place for your skew to go now. So you just hold it nice, hold the bevel nice on this edge and just work your way down to the depth that you want. So you see that leaves you a nice clean cut both directions. Now we just have to blend this cut back into this one. We can do that with the diamond tool or the skew, whichever you're comfortable with. Um, the, diamond, the diamond chisel, you're just gonna, you're just gonna work your way around like this, being careful not to hit back here. Uh, but we are gonna take some of this away anyhow. Or you can use your skew, run it on the top of your piece, and just roll it nice and gently, letting the bevel ride, roll it nice and gently into here. And you can tell that there's room for it to go in there. So I'm just gonna roll it nice and easy with the skew.
All right, so those cuts are nice and clean. They require very little sanding. So now you can take your skew if you like and you can continue to shape this. And again, if you're not good with it, you can use your bowl gouge and, and work it around or you can use a scraper, whatever whatever you're the most comfortable with. Just know that everything, um, every chisel is gonna make a different cut on this and, and the scraper is gonna give you the most sanding to do. So all that I'm trying to do there is blend those cuts. Now they probably show up as if they're not very smooth, but they're actually quite smooth and you'll see how easy it is to sand that. Okay, now we're gonna put the we're gonna put the roof on here. Now once again, if you if you take your bowl gouge, you start out here and work your way across, keeping your bevel riding, you'll get a nice clean edge right here. You won't get any of that tear out. So I kind of like the shape of that. I'm just gonna round that up, make a nice little hut style roof on this. Okay, so before I get this too small here, I'm gonna sand what I have. If your lathe's reversible, when you start out, turn the other direction. In between grits, change direction. So this is just 180 grit paper. So while I was editing this, uh, I found that it was getting quite long, so I did speed up the sanding uh, four times. So if you time how long this took, it was just actually under four minutes of total sanding for the whole piece. So I left a little ridge there when I turned that. I should have cut down a little bit more. Okay, so I'm going from 180 up to 240. Just changing directions again. Now I'm only gonna sand this to 240 because one made out of pine like this is more apt to be bought by someone who wants to paint it and put a little designs on it. Um, where if you were gonna do this out of say laminated hardwood to make it fancy, you'd wanna sand this right up and put a friction polish or some kind of a finish on it. So this one will be to paint. Now we're just gonna work our way nice and slowly to put a nice point on this.
Okay, once again, before you get this too, too small, sand this little peak you put on. Okay, for the next part, you want to turn your RPM down. There. Now we just have to sand this little tip off and we've got a finished little birdhouse. Now we're going to put the bottom on next. Now of course you don't have to do this by hand. You can use a little disc on a drill or whatever. I just find it for all that, for all that there is, it's just as easy to do it this way. Okay, for the next part, we're going to make a plug to fit in the bottom. So once again, you can mark the center on this and I can just eye this because it's, it's much bigger than I need. Now, what we're going to do is I've made a little template. I use the same drill bit that I drilled the bottom of that with. I'm going to use that to gauge the size of this so I know that I'm okay. Now, if you're fortunate enough that this will slip over top of your tailstock, you can just have this sit right on here and it won't affect your, it won't affect your work. So we're going to rough this in round. This was a much larger diameter piece of wood than I needed to make inch and a quarter plugs. A piece this long probably would get a dozen plugs at least out of it. Uh, so I did speed this up. I would normally only start it with an inch and a half square piece of wood to do this with, but it's what I had on hand for the demonstration, so I thought I'd use it. Okay, so here's a little trick to this. If you line your tool rest up with the bedways on your lathe so that you know that you're parallel, put your finger underneath your tool, re underneath your tool rest, don't let it move, Hold your chisel, get your feet in position where you can just move your body across the face of the wood without moving your hands. So that, that that'll work like a nice straight cut all the way across. So as long as your tool rest is parallel to the centers of your, your head and tail stock, you'll get a, a straight dowel. Okay, so what you can do when you've got your dowel turned all the way across and you've touched it all the way across, take a set of calipers, measure this end, measure the center, measure this end. Now, I'm smaller here than I am here. That means that my, my tool rust is sitting this way. So I'm gonna turn it just a little bit back and you can gauge now by your piece. We're getting close. This is a good technique to learn, especially if you want to do rolling pins to keep them flat. Now you see this has got a crack in it, this piece of wood, so I just grabbed a piece of scrap. I only need a couple of little pieces to put in these ones that I made today. And then you're just gonna chop them on the chop saw. Make them whatever thickness that you want to fill the bottom hole. So once again, this is scrap wood. So if you make a mistake, you, you wrecked a piece of scrap wood. You can grab another piece and go. But we're close. Now I'm gonna sand this with some 80 grit paper and that'll take it down a little smoother.
Okay, that's good. Now we're going to take this off, going to cut it up into discs, and uh, we'll use these for plugs for the bottom of those little, the little house. So I'm just going to cut them on the miter saw and I'll show you when I glue them back in. Okay, so what I've done is I've got my plug all cut. I took a, a bead of thick CA glue and put it around the inside of the bottom. I've taken my activator, I'm going to spray activator on the plug. And we just slide that right in. Sit it on the table, push it down till it's flush. You'll see that'll come up good. And that, in a second, will be there forever. The activator will evaporate off and it'll look just fine. So now you got a nice little house that someone can paint. Now, you can do this any size that you want to. Um, this is a piece of cedar, just Eastern white cedar. <clears throat> this is an actual birdhouse. So everything we just did with that little ornamental birdhouse, the exact same process, the exact same steps and everything, you can do that to make that any size that you want to, including up to a full size birdhouse. So this is 12 inches tall. It was made out of a piece that was five and a half or six inches to start with. It has a four inch hole drilled eight inches deep, which is a compartment that will work for um, chickadees and wrens and nut hatches. And it's got an inch and a quarter hole in it. Don't put a dowel in, because then predators can get on it. Just a plain hole in it like this. Put an eyelet in the top, uh, hang it by some wire, mechanics wire quite tight to the eyelet to a branch quite close to the base, like to the stem of the tree. Um, the only difference is when you put your plug in this, you put it in with three uh, stainless steel or brass screws that won't, uh, that won't rust. And um, every fall then you can just take those three screws out, empty it out, put it back up again in the next spring. So this is actually easier to make than the ornamental one because there's more room to work on this. Um, and, and they actually use them. I've had them around my property. I've given some to my dad and he uses them and they do sell. So people ask about prices on different things and it's really market sensitive. Uh, this one right here, you get $25 out of it, all, you know, at a craft show. The little ones, you probably would get 10. And again, if you wanted to take the time to laminate those up and make them more fancy, I wouldn't suggest you do that with these kind because it's going outdoors. But, uh, but you could make a decorative one like this if you knew someone that wanted one. With the little, the little small ones, um, you could put those you know, in a whole bunch of different colored woods, as I mentioned before, a lot of nice hardwoods and turn real fancy ones. Instead of just putting the plug in the bottom, you can actually turn a plug that has a finial on it, uh, so it has a nice fancy look on the bottom, so in case someone wanted to hang them. They make good good tree ornaments as well for Christmas time. So it's just a few ideas um, for things for craft shows and markets in your area, something to help you earn a little extra cash and get yourself some more gear. And we will see you next time.